Today I want to talk about hearing the word and, and doing the word. So um, I'd like for us to turn to 1 Corinthians this morning. And so happy Father's Day, Pastor Brian. And, you know, um, Pastor Brian is our spiritual father. I know many of us can attest to that that are here, um, that we've been with him. And he's been our spiritual father. And what a wonderful um, father he has been to so many. He cares for us deeply, prays for us. And so I just want to honor you and just say thank you for all you sowed into everyone that is here and your prayers and just giving all the time and your heart for the people, the heart for God and uh, being such a visionary and following what God has for Broken Chains Church is tremendous. So, um, and in honoring that, I want us to honor the word that Pastor Brian brings every day time he comes into this pulpit and every time he shares with us um, as he ministers or counsels we want to hear the word that god has that flows through him that flows from this pulpit from this house um, things when we go minister to others um, we want to hear the word so today i want to talk about faith comes by hearing and hearing by what the word of god and so remind us, faith comes by hearing. That's hearing with your ears. That's one of the senses, right? One of the five senses is hearing. It's, it's something that God gave us. So we're, he's saying, hey, hear what I have to say. And he says, uh, you know, it's for us to please the Father. It says you have to have faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord, right? So with faith, we're pleasing the Father. So to get that faith, it says faith comes by what? Hearing, okay? Hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Getting in your Word. Getting what it says. Getting the revelation of what God is speaking. That means you got to get in it and hear what God has to say. It means coming to church on Sunday, on Wednesday, when the doors are open, hearing that word and hearing it again. Does faith come just once? No. no. It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And we're hearing what God is going to say. That's why we have the rainbow word, the on-time word, the word that God has for us right now in this moment where it is spoken forth and everybody's need to hear something from God and he speaks to us each on an individual level and you just have to be receptive of what he has. So he speaks to us corporately, right, as a body of broken chain church, but he also, God is so loving, so caring, he sees us each right where we're at, the situation that we're in, at this moment, maybe a hard time, maybe a decision you're having to make, uh, maybe there's just finances, maybe there's a healing, and you're believing God, and you're you're needing that faith, and he says, hey, faith comes by hearing my word, and I want you to continue to hear it, and I want you to continue to put it in over and over and over and over again, and it doesn't come just that one time and say, I got it, God, thank you very much, I got your word, thank you, but he says it keeps coming by the hearing. And here with the word, he says, I need you to meditate on it day and night and night and day. I need you in it. I need you to be permeated in it. I need it to flow through you. I want to breathe in and out. I want you, as you put it in, it's what, it's what you put in. It's what, it, what comes out. You know, we talked to you, when you, when you bump someone, you know, where with the youth are like, you bump them. What comes out of you at that moment? Is it good? Is it godly? Is it edifying? Or is it on the contrary? Okay, so what you're putting in matters, and it needs to be the word of God, and it needs to be faith. And when you put that in, guess what? Your faith is going to rise. It's going to be with what God wants, and you're going to be like, Lord, I have faith for the impossible. I believe there's going to be breakthrough in my situation. I believe you can speak, and I'm going to hear you clearly what you have for me right now. And we pray, Lord, give me ears to hear and a heart of understanding to know what that thing is for my situation right now. And, you know, as you're seeking him, you got to remember, you got to say in the word, say in the word, be that here. Okay. Now there's listening, right? I mean, you know, we have kids. <laughs> you may be listening, right? They may be listening, but they're not really hearing you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, and, and, you know, so you got to remember, we're supposed to be hearers, right? We're not just there listening, uh-huh, God, uh-huh, uh-huh, and not really paying attention to what he wants, right? But we're to truly listen. Tune in that ear to what he is specifically saying for you. Because he's he's talking. He's wanting to reach you. 
but you have to be available and say, I hear you, Lord. I have a heart that wants to receive what you have. Not that I'm, I'm turning off the things of God. So something I wanted to go into here, a little thing I wanted to kind of lay out. So let's read 1 Corinthians. Let me turn there real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. And so we're going to talk about the watering. We're doing a lot of gardening in our house at the moment inside uh, water gardening. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 6 and 7. So I can relate to this, to the whole planting and watering thing right now, because we do hydroponics, garden, and stuff. So here it says, verse 6, he goes, Paul says, I have planted, you guys know this verse, many of you know it, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase, okay? And how do you know planting is very important <laughs> when you're trying to get a harvest or something? Okay, but how many know watering is also a vital part, yes. but both are important, correct? Yes. Both are very important in the process. And so here the words trying to show that both of them. So when you are hearing the word of God, and this, this is, this is kind of like a, an encouragement. As we hear the word of God, right, it's being planted, okay? And as pastors minister up here, he's planting the word on you, in you guys and a service, okay? But then he's coming again, and the next Sunday, he's he's watering it some more, and he's planting some new seeds of revelation, what God gave him, uh, just the anointing of God's flowing. He's pouring out just revelation of what God's given them, and he's pouring out. Now, sometimes, how do you guys know that when you've been in church a long time, you can hear a story over and over, okay? And sometimes you're hearing it, and you're hearing it, and you're like, sometimes people of God can maybe turn it off a little bit. We're like, I'm always talking about David and Goliath again, or something like that. But there's revelation when it's being brought forth in the house of God. There's a deep revelation that God is wanting to speak through and get to you, that there's always something new to learn, always something new to glean that God is wanting to say, hey, pay attention. You don't know everything, right? We don't know all the word. And there's things that want to be ministered to that word. There's an anointing for that time of something that is going on that can reach every person in the church. So he says, I have planted God in, and then one watered and God gave the increase. So it's the same word, the same gospel they were giving out, right? They were sowing the seeds. They were getting out. They were going to churches and planting and watering over and over again. And one of the points I want to say is how there's repetition. We come to church and we get the word of God and we hear it. But we need to be those that are eager to hear what God is wanting to truly say to us every time we come to the house of God. What God are you planting inside of me? What has he put? What deep revelation is he giving? What is he teaching me specifically? How is he helping me turn my situation around so I can give him the glory? How can I show God's faithfulness through my life? God, I want to hear what you have to say because I want my faith to arise. I don't want to just sit here stoic and be like, I know what's going on. But I want to truly hear what God is saying to me right here, right now. And so... You know, we can hear it, but we need to enjoy the repetition process of hearing it over and over and over. You know, even the kids downstairs, we give them some stories, and they're like, I know that story, I know that story, and you hear them, they're all saying, I know it, I know it. Yes, I am so glad you know it. I'm glad we've been pushed, put it in, and you guys are understanding it, but there's always something more to glean from the Word of God, amen? Always something new. God's... Uh, his revelations, they just go on and on. The rainbow word that God would have for you, it, it, it permeates and it goes for every person that's in the church house. And so I want us to take on that repetition and take on with joy and gladness. Because as pastors putting in the word of God and seeking God's face for, a, say, a Sunday morning like today, he has something fresh and new for you today. God has something fresh and anew for you today. Something that will change uh, your mindset, because we have the mind of, Christ, mind of Christ. Something that will shift what you're thinking. Maybe there's something you're not thinking quite right on a circumstance. And you're like, Lord, I'm hearing your word. I want my faith to rise, and I want to walk in understanding. And I want to be victorious in this situation. Maybe it's healing you're believing for it. 
All right, you guys have heard, by his stripes I'm healed. You guys, we hear that repetitiously. We hear it all the time, over and over and over again, right? But God wants us, our faith to continue to arise and believe in that just 100% that God is faithful, that he's going to take care of us no matter what. And he wants to stir that faith up so that when we leave this church house, we're able to believe and have the faith as we step out those doors and meet a world in need and walk with compassion and love and grace and mercy. We just talked Wednesday about the Zoe life, how goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Amen? And so, you know, no matter what's going on, you know, allow the word to come in and permeate you, to be a part of who you are. And not only the church. How many of you guys know in the church house right now, when you're in the presence of God, we've had praise and worship. We've had an awesome time. It's easy to believe the word, right? If there are saying, you know, by his stripes on you, you're ready to believe it. But when we step out the doors, we need to be a people who believe the same thing when we go out those doors and we're speaking it also. Now, can we think about the scriptures all day long and believe it? But how many of you know it's when you speak the word is when things truly happen because it's what's in your spirit, man, that is coming out. You truly, When you speak out, you're hearing it, all right? And that also allows your faith to rise in that situation of what you're going through. So we can't just go out there thinking the word and just with our mouth shut. We've got to speak the word also. How many of you guys know that? It's not just... I have the word in me, and it's all just in me, but you have to let it out, okay? You know how many David, he let it out when he spoke to Goliath, all right? He spoke what was going to happen and who, what God was going to do. We can't keep our mouths shut, amen? And so we got to enjoy the planting process of the word. we got to enjoy the watering, the repetition of it. When we come here, we need to come with gladness, knowing our faith is going to be stirred, that God wants to make a deposit in our life so that we're ready to take it out that next week and wherever we go in our workplace, our, our friends, our family, wherever we're going to go, God can use us in a moment's notice and we'll be ready to speak the word and see lives forever changed, amen? We want to help the, the broken and the hurting as we go in the world. So we need to be the same here. And this is one thing I love about Pastor Brian. He's the same across the board. You see him here? He's, he's one way. And out there? No, no, no. He's the same out there as he is in here. He does not change. You see him right now? He's like that. Spirit writers, he's like that. He's talking to his mama. He's like that. He's speaking with his friends. He's the same everywhere he goes. He ministers the same. He walks the same anointing everywhere he goes. He is the same, same, same. I'm telling you, that has challenged me from the day I met him. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it is the word, the word that even that repetitious word, you just keep putting it in, you keep putting it in. And, but like I said, you just can't be a gluttonous hoarder of this word. You've got to let it out. You've got to speak it out. Amen. And so I'm going to, what verse am I going to let me see. Let's go to Mark eleven twenty three. You guys know this. This is what Pastor, he says this a lot. So we're just going to turn there. Mark eleven twenty three. I'm telling you, if you, get, if you get the word and you start speaking your life, not just keeping it in, but truly speaking over every circumstance by faith, your life is going to be transformed. It's time that we start speaking it everywhere that we go unashamedly. Just declaring who our God is. So my favorite verse is uh, Mark 11, 22. It says, have faith in God because everything you, need, you go through, you have to have faith in God. And it reminds me that God is faithful. And so have faith in God is so easy to remember. Just four little words, have faith in God. And it'll help you. And you realize who your God truly is. And we, we sing way maker. He is the way. He's the way, the truth, the life. Uh, he is just so good. So but the next verse says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever, and you can put your name as that whosoever, shall say to your mountain, be thou removed. So you can say, I, I am saying to my mountain, be removed. And I, I get casted into the sea. I shall not doubt in my heart, but I'm going to have faith. Okay? So your faith is encouraged by you hearing the word. So it says, don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say, 
right? What you're speaking, what's coming off your mouth, what's coming out of your lips, what's coming out of your heart, out of your spirit, what's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your spirit again? Is it the spirit of God is, have you been putting the word in? Have you been uh, letting your faith arise? Have you been walking in the joy of the Lord, the goodness of God, knowing that you're victorious, knowing that you're a blood-bought saint, that Jesus is your savior? Have you been walking in those things? But it goes on to say that he shall have whatsoever he, what, saith. Not whatever he may be thinking about or dwelling on. It's what you say. And that may be one of the hardest things some people can do is your mouth has to be saying what you believe. So are you one way in the church declaring God and praising God? He is good. And we get out there and we're shy or we're timid. The word says timid. Are you timid? Are you rearing back and not declaring who your God is? The goodness of God? Or, you know, if you're declaring healing, in here, let's declare it out there. Oh, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Or I'm victorious in Jesus' name. You know, everywhere I go, I'm walking in victory in, in Jesus' name. You know, my steps are ordered by the Lord. And not let fear come in, but let faith arise. You know, we, we don't have that spirit of fear, but power and love and sound mind. How I many you know the peace of God, having a sound mind, is an amazing thing to have <laughs> that the world cannot obtain but only through Jesus Christ. And so having those things in our arsenal, God is so good. He's, he's full of peace. He allows me to be led by the peace of God in my decisions and where he's taking me. Um, and he, he loves me so much. He, he's already paved the way for healing. He's made the way. I'm healed. I'm declaring it. And I can walk in it. He will give you, the word says about giving you a supply of the spirit. Whatever you need from the Lord, you by faith say, Lord, I, I need from you right now, Holy Spirit, a supply of faith for whatever you're going through. God, as you, as you believe, receive it. And praise God for it. He will give you what you need for whatever you're going through. He is good. He loves his people. <laughs> he loves you. But it says it's when you say to your mountain, okay? It says that you shall have whatever you say, whatever you are speaking. So we have to open our mouths as believers. It's vital that we're speaking these things out. When you're talking amongst your friends, that it's edifying the Lord, that it's of God. And with the word, we're giving the word out to people, that we're throwing those nuggets to them, and they're hearing it, and it's stirring them, and it's showing that God's, God's doing something. But we just don't ever want to come to the house of God and let pride come in and say, no, kind of shut up. I've already heard that word. I've heard the story. Pastor's just repeating the story again, and I guess we'll just hear it again. <laughs> No, God says faith comes by hearing the word of God. And that, you guys said, it's not a one-time thing, right? That means repetition, hearing it over and over and over. Because some of you guys know, we need to hear it daily. God didn't say meditate or day and night just because he wants us to learn it. He said, it's, what, it's what's going to transform you. It's going to give you that mind of Christ. So maybe at a time your, your faith may be lacking, you get in that word and your faith man starts stirring up and the, the lies of the enemy, you, you don't believe them or fear starts coming in. You knock that stuff off and you let that faith stir up and you declare who you are as a child of God. So I am an overcomer through Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. God cares for me, and he has great plans for me, great purpose for my life. I am a part of the body of Christ. I'm one of the members of Christ, and the church needs me, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to serve, and I'm going to love the Lord and be passionate for the things of God. And so he wants us to come in and want and desire him. We talk about come back to your first love. Man, when you're first in love and you know, you're, God's there and you say, I love you. You want to do anything for the Lord. And your heart's just stirring. And man, what can I do? And you want to get in his word. And we need to stir up that love in us so that we're ready for where God is taking us. Stirring us up for getting that planting process, getting that watering process. So when we come to those doors, God, what do you have for me? What is it today that you want to teach me? What do you want to show me? 
But we, like I said, we don't want to be people that just say, I've learned it all, right? I've got it all figured out. I went to church 20, 30 years. I know it, Pastor. I know it. I know it. <laughs> no, we need to be people that say, Pastor, I'm here. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to hear it. What do you got for me? What does God want to speak to you today that can teach me, show me what I'm going through this week? How can it help me? How can it prepare me? How can it uh, equip me as a saint to get out there and reveal your word to someone out there? Something new, something fresh. Maybe there's things, you know, he, he's going to, God's going to download things in Pastor Brian that we may have never <laughs> read in the word that will blow our minds. And God's saying, today's your day. I want to show you today. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm going to give you a word. I'm going to give you a nugget. Are you ready? And we have to have a heart of humility to receive it. Ears that want to hear the word, right? So we're ready to take it and then so we can pour it back out. But we can't just receive it, right, and not give it out. We, we want to be people who are, okay, I'm hungry, God, today. I want your word. I desire it. I want the Holy Spirit to move on my life today. And, Lord, help me glean something. And then immediately out there, how apply to your circumstance in your life. Yes, God wants breakthrough. He wants transformation. He wants to change us from the inside out. But also, when I get out there, who can I minister? Who can I impact? Who's the broken? Who's the hurting that I can touch this week, the next few days. He's equipping us, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, amen? And it's not just in here. It is in here, though, but it's out there, too, wherever you go, speaking the word. Um, and, you know, we can we can keep Amy. I was thinking the kiddos, they won the BB contest. Several of them got placed in that. And, you know, someone can say, I have known they've been in church for years. They know the word. I've been through the motions of coming. You know, kids... They're, they're getting their beats. They're going to be that little kid where they're like, I, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. And he may have just picked up the BB gun and kind of felt it. Maybe he had the little BBs and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to hit that target. You know, I've, I've been over here trying to act like I'm aiming, but never, you know, aimed and really hit anything. And the time comes for competition. And you got these ones over here who have practiced and practiced and they're, they're doing well, but they continue to practice. You got this one over here that thinks he's doing good, going through the motions. I, I got the aim down. I got, I got, I see that target. But they didn't put in the, the time, the effort. They didn't take the learning and stuff. And, you know, I can just imagine them out there and he tries to shoot and he just can't even hit the tree that the target's on, you know? He can't, because he didn't put in the time to understand how to maybe work the gun or, you know, how to fill it right or just how to aim really good. But those who are willing to learn, those who are willing to put in the time and the effort to do target practice, like some of our kids do, they have, they, they've been practicing their BB shooting and target practice, and they, they would keep practicing, keep practicing, so that when that time comes, they are ready at that moment to give what it needs, to make that winning shot, <laughs> to hit that target. And so we need to be those that continue to get the word, continue to fill us in. So it comes from you speaking the word. And, and I know that sounds so simple, but it is so true. Having the faith and speaking it out outside these doors, not just in the church house, everywhere that you go, speaking his word. And you have what you say. So we need to be doers of the word also, not just the hearers. Be those doers. Be out there praying for people. Be out there ministering. And I wanted to share um, something else. Psalm 8-2 says, and you guys know this, it says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the vendor. So it says, out of your mouth, you can say my mouth, out of my mouth comes strength, and it's going to defeat the enemy. So out of your mouth comes strength, okay? So everybody say strength. Strength. Out of your mouth. Say out of my mouth mouth. comes strength. Strength. God has mighty things that he will use if you will open your mouth and speak. Now he says babes here, but it's still out of of your mouth comes strength to conquer what the enemy is doing. And that's why you need to be speaking to those mountains, speaking to your situation. Life, life, 
Okay, he says, life and death is in the power of your mouth, of your tongue, what you speak, what you say. Life and death is there. And so we need to be speaking that life because when that happens, the, the blessings, the blessings in the life, because it will minister strength and your enemy is going to feel the effects. Uh, you know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But those things, when they arise, it's going to conquer those things. We talked about worship, you know. Worship changes the atmosphere. That's you speaking out something. That's you singing out something. It's your mouth declaring who God is. It changes the atmosphere. It changes things. But you have to speak. It can't be the person next to you. Pastor Brian can't be speaking to me. He can teach me everything. But I have to be the one doing the speaking in my life to, to overcome and to conquer the things that I'm going through. And I need to open my mouth. I can't just always rely on Pastor Brian for me. I have to speak with my own mouth strength and the power of the word and who Jesus is so that I can be the, the believer that God's called me to be and to win the victories in my life. Amen? Yeah. And I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but the vision that God gave Pastor Brian for year 2024 was to hear the word and do the word. If you guys remember that, when we fast at the beginning, it was hear the word and do the word. And that is what we need to do. So we need to hear it because faith comes by hearing. Your faith arises. We do the word. We do the work of the ministry. And God is going to just amazingly change things around when you start doing that. When you start lining yourself up that way, he wants to move upon your life amazingly. And whatever you're saying down here, According to the Word of God, guess what? God's backing you up. He's backing you up there on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? On earth as it is in heaven. He's got your back. You declare His Word over your life, over your circumstance, what you're going through. And He looks to perform it. He, he's looking. He's saying, come on, my kids, my children. <laughs> he's saying, come on, speak it. Speak it by faith. Okay? By faith, and he wants to do that thing that you're declaring by faith and speaking over your circumstance. So you have complete victory in him. And you know, when you do get that victory, you give God the glory because people see what God's been doing in your life and people will be drawn in. And how do you think people are gonna get in the church house when you start declaring who God is and they see it in your life and they're like, hey, I want to come to church with you. <laughs> I want to meet this living God that you're declaring and you're saying, you're speaking about all the time. I want to be a part of that. I want to hear, who is this God? I want to know him. They're going to be drawn in by that goodness that you're shining through in your life. Because we're written epistles. We're the, we're the book. We're, they're, we're being read by all men. Okay? So what are they reading in our life? Let's let it be what God is declaring in our life. Let's let our words be pleasing to the Father in all that we do. Amen. And, you know, we want to have the, the abundant life. Pastor shared Wednesday about John 10.10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. We know that. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his tactics. They've never changed. Whatever that may cover, it's still the same thing. But Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundant. Okay? And he was saying about that's the Zoe life. That God wants that goodness and that mercy to fill us all the days of our life, to live that Zoe full life in God. That He has great plans for each of us. And if we believe that, then we're going to share it with others that God has an amazing purpose for those that are hurting and broken out there. That He can transform their situation around, no matter how dark or bleak their, their situation may be. We can give them hope through Jesus Christ that they can be transformed and renewed by the word of God.